What's up everybody? Andrew and I are here today to review the Engway M20 e-bike. This is probably one of the most unique e-bikes we've ever tested, mostly because it kind of looks like a dirt bike. We're gonna break right into it. We're gonna go through the assembly. We're gonna go through the performance, the components. We've got a couple different tests that we've done on this and we're gonna take you along with us. The assembly was a little frustrating. The headlight was definitely the most difficult part. Other than that, it was fairly easy. Mostly because why? Because it's got like it's got like six bolts on here. Weird mounting stuff, yeah. And it's got a bunch of like components that looks like you're supposed to like shove into the base of the light, right? Yeah. So a little weird there. Um, how long did it take you guys to assemble it? It took me and Tyler about two hours to assemble this thing. Is there any brother fighting? I did yell at him a few times because he was in charge of reading the instructions while I was putting stuff together. That sounds about par for the course. Let's jump into the specs of this bike. This bike has a 750 watt rear hub motor with two separate batteries. Each of these batteries uh, are 48 volt system and they have a 13 amp hour battery life. We'll talk about what that actually equates to in our performance tests in just a minute. Other than that, it's got disc brakes. However, I gotta say these are cable pull disc brakes. By the way, this thing weighs in at a whopping 95 pounds with both batteries mounted on it. I think bare bones without the batteries, it still comes in at over 75 pounds. So this is a really heavy bike. And when you get up to the max speed, which is by the way, about 25, 26 miles an hour, you want to be able to stop. And that's where I felt like this was like, it stops me every time, but I feel like I have to grab a handful of brake to get it to stop. Yeah, definitely. It's our heaviest e-bike, but it's the one with the worst brakes, which is... It's kind of opposite, what yeah. you would expect. This is a full suspension bike. It has a front fork, as well as a rear shock right down in here. If I bounce around on the pedals, I can feel it a little bit. I don't know, maybe it's doing more than I think it is, but I don't really notice it very much. When I go over curbs and bumps, it bottoms out every time. So I don't know if that's just that I'm an old fat man <laughs> or what the difference is. You rode this on a trail. What was it like on a trail with that rear suspension? Like there aren't any real jumps over there, but I'd hit some of the ones that they've oh, kind of made. And I was able to go decently high on them. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so you took this off jumps? Well, I have it on video. You guys can see it. This has a one by seven drivetrain. So it's got seven gears that you can actually pedal and shift. I noticed that when I'm on this bike, it's just a different geometry than we would have in a normal bike. I felt like it was not comfortable to pedal. No, definitely not. In fact, most of the time when I'm on it, I would rather, I would rather hit the throttle than pedal. Oh, obviously, yeah. yeah. The shifter is also a really cheap Shimano quick fire shifter. All in all, I just feel like this bike was not meant to be a pedal bike. No, no. It's really meant to be a throttled e-bike most of the time. Yes. The computer on this is fairly easy to use. I do like that it has a couple customizations. You can change it from Imperial to metric or vice versa. You can change the top speed so you can change how fast it governs. We obviously opened it all the way up. I think it's maxed out at 26 miles an hour. Probably. But you I've, can... I've gotten it to go 27 a few times. Especially going downhill. <laughs> on a full charge. On a full charge. So anyway, you can change that maximum speed so that it's much lower if you don't want to max out at 25, 26 miles an hour. Uh, you can also change the sensitivity of the pedal assist. So you can change that setting so that it's much faster that the pedal assist engages as soon as you start pedaling. It comes with fenders, full fenders. I really like that. I did too. I rode it in the rain and I rode it in some puddles the other night. I'm doing mostly fine. My legs are a lot muddy and the bike is a lot muddy. But other than that, I'm not really getting sprayed by very much, you know, mud and rain, except for the ones from the sky. And the fenders kept me dry, but the thing is if you're riding in the rain, you're getting hit from above, so it doesn't really make a difference sure. if you're... But when I rode through some big puddles when it wasn't raining, only, only my ankles got a little bit wet, and that's all. Yeah, I mean, that's the important part, right? You want to stay dry and you want to keep the mud off of you. This bike does come with a full one year warranty. So everything that you see on the bike is uh, warrantied, will be free replacement if there's any manufacturer defects. So if you have any problems with the battery, the motor or anything like that, one year warranty, which I thought was really nice. what do you think about the color scheme? Like if you look closely, it's like a little sparkly kind of. Yeah, it's like a pearl white finish. And then it's got this tan seat, which I didn't think I would like, but I really don't mind it. Yeah, it's not bad. 
the other thing that was a little weird is these are like four inch wide tires, but they're only like 20 inches around. Yeah, that it feels super weird the first time you ride it. It's just like the geometry is so much different. Compared to the mountain bikes that we normally ride, it's definitely different. Yeah, I did not feel like it was a mountain bike and I felt a little weird on the trail, but no one else was there. It just took a little getting used to. So let's talk about performance. Andrew and I've had a chance to really put this through the ringer. Andrew, Tyler, and I actually, and we have put over 210 miles on this bike in the last month, month and a half. In fact, when we first had it the first week, I think we put like 20 or 30 miles on it in the first two or three days. I could not believe how many miles we put on it. I thought the odometer was wrong, but it just turns out that you guys liked riding it that much. We just rode it around quite a bit. So you guys really enjoyed it. The boys, more so probably than me. I mean, it's a fun bike to ride, but you guys w couldn't get off. No, it's fun if you're riding it around town. So it's more fun on roads than on dirt. Definitely, yeah. I think on a dirt road, it would do pretty good. Yeah, I think rail trails, dirt roads, around a camp, maybe an RV park. I think this bike does really well. It's been really nice to ride around campus. I've been going up to the university that I work at on this bike. There's no students on campus right now, so I can zip around from building to building and it just takes me seconds flat. So it's kind of fun. So let's talk about battery life. This thing has two batteries, which is really fun. You can turn on one at a time or both at the same time. Uh, we've been typically doing one at a time. We had you do a really fun test. So I rode out as far as I could on a hilly road on one battery. We have the watch going, we have a full battery. Now let's go and see how far this thing can go. 3.0 miles in, it starts raining on me. Uh, hopefully it doesn't start raining harder. 7.2 miles in, it's been 21 minutes and my battery is at four out of five bars. We are at 16.6 .6 miles and we're on basically flat road it may be slightly uphill but the bike has slowed down a lot is it gonna die nope we're still going all right i'm just gonna record until it dies oh oh it's still going my hands are cold. I'm gonna fall over because it's going so slow. Uh, what if I try to use the pedal assist? Oh, holy crap. All right, I'm okay, I'm gonna call it right there at 17.0 miles, 55 minutes basically. And I'm gonna turn on the other battery and flip around. Okay, so I went back and checked the GPS. You rode 17 miles and you climbed 1700 feet. Really? Yeah. And so the battery died at 17 miles. Yes. 1700 feet of climbing. What was really impressive that I don't think our other e-bikes have is it stayed fast up until like the last minute or two of the battery life. How fast were you actually going? Not fast at all, like 10 miles an hour. Did it have anything to do with you going up a hill? Yes, I was going up a hill, but on the other hills, I don't think I was going that slow. Okay, so when you were going up some of the hills, like what was the, the max speed? I was still able to go like 15 miles an hour. And did you take note of how much battery power was left when you got back? It was like one or two out of five bars. But it looks like you got a little bit better mileage coming back since it was downhill. Yes. But did you feel weird? Did you feel unsafe or unseen? I don't think so. I feel like cars can see me pretty well because there's a light in the back and the front. When I hit the brakes, the brake light lights up like a true brake light. Yeah, that's impressive. I like that. That's something we haven't seen on any other e-bike, by the way. No. I think we have that on the electric scooter. <laughs> the electric scooter does have that feature. Andrew, one day I, I know you went to do some testing in the rain. Yes. You took it on the trails and in the rain, lots of puddles. How wet did you really get? I got soaked from the sky, not from the water flying up and hitting me. That's pretty good. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten caught coming home, commuting in the rain, and just been soaked. So having fenders, for me, is just super, super helpful. Yes. Do you notice how noisy this bike is? It's rattly, yes. It 
So let's do a drop test so you guys can see exactly what this is like in a drop test. Hopefully the sound will come through, but this bike does shake and rattle. And I don't know how much of that is the fenders versus the chain. The chain doesn't have any kind of clutch on it. It definitely rattles around. It's not the most quiet bike you'd like to see. What I do think is really funny that they didn't have to add, but it's just a, another feature they added for some reason, is it has a horn. <laughs> actually, that's really nice, especially if you're traveling around in a large, you know, densely populated area, there's a lot of other foot traffic or something. You wanna have something that tells people that you're coming so that they can get out of the way. So I don't think it's funny. Um, I actually think it's really, really helpful. It just sounds kind of funny. <laughs> and you're not used to a bike that has a horn. Yeah. We've talked a little bit about the max speed. This thing goes about 25, 26 miles an hour, which I really like that I can go that fast. In our little town, where the speed limit is normally 25 miles an hour, I can go just as fast as any of the cars and I can get to work really quickly and I'm not sweaty, which I really like. Um, there's one problem for me. I don't like the acceleration. No, the acceleration is terrible. So this bike does not go zero to 25 in three seconds. It does not have that Tesla kind of put you back in your seat kind of torque. Acceleration test. I know that this at like top speed is about 26, 27 miles an hour. So let's see how long it takes to speed up. Starting in three, two, one. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. This little bike takes 10 to 15 seconds to get up to full speed. But once I'm up to full speed, you're going fast. I feel fast. You don't usually have a bike that takes you 25 miles an hour around town. <laughs> no, I don't. It's fun. I like it, but you have to slow down a lot to, you know, turn. Yeah, those pesky turns just get in the way. We've already shown this bike has a really nice brake light system. Um, You've ridden this at night a couple times. How did you feel riding around at night? Did you feel like you could see very well? I could see a little bit and I think cars could see me. It could be brighter, but I can't complain. I'm actually pretty happy with how bright those lights are. So when a car is coming at us from the broadside, they will see and their headlights will light up the reflectors on the wheels. I really wish there were more reflectors maybe in the battery, maybe on the fork, maybe around the wheels, just to make this bike light up the night because I think more light is always better than less. Let's point out, we've even tried to ride this with two people on the bike at the same time. We've done that a few times. The second person is not comfortable. <laughs> the first person's not very comfortable. So we've had the bike for five or six weeks, put 205 miles on it. I've ridden it to work for multiple weeks. Andrew, you've ridden it all around town, just scooting all over the place. What's your final assessment? Is this bike worth the money? These typically run about $1,500, which is really in the same price range as the other bikes that we've tested in the past. Yes. I think it's fun to use. If you're using, if you're planning on using it on a trail, go and get a different bike. This one isn't for you. If you're planning on just zipping around town, I think it's worth it. It's fun. If you're a poor college student and you have $1,500 for transportation, and you can choose between one of the e-bikes that we've tested in the past, which one do you choose? This one. This is the one you want? Well, it goes the fastest and it's just for transportation, so I don't see why. Okay. Andrew's assessment, my assessment is that this bike is a heck of a lot of fun. It really is a good little commuter bike. I don't think it's a great option for riding as a dirt bike, even though it kind of has the dirt bike look and feel. I don't really think it's a real dirt bike. I feel like it's maybe a little too cheaply made to be beat to death on a trail. And I really do feel like it would get beat. <laughs> uh, but that being said, we did take it on some trails and it did perform. If you're interested in learning more about this bike, check out the link in the description below to the Engway website. I'll have all the information that you need there to get to this bike and even potentially buy one yourself. This video is not sponsored. I just wanted to test another e-bike. I only like to test bikes that are either in our genre of mountain biking or good for commuting or are just kind of quirky. And that's where I put this bike. It's just kind of a little quirky, but man, it's been a lot of fun to ride. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time. I am soaking wet. There's mud and dirt on my legs. You can't see it super well on camera. The insides of my shoes are soaked. 
and the bike is very, very dirty. My hands are cold. Oh, come on, I gotta do that again. I cannot see what the camera is seeing. 